Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on the exchange rate. Previously, we looked at the causes for exchange rate movements and it all comes down to demand and supply. Today, we're gonna to look at the various impacts that exchange rate movements can have on the economy. A lot of the focus will be on balance of payments. So it'll probably help you a lot if you have prior understanding of that. I've got a whole playlist dedicated to that topic. So perhaps check that out first. I even have a video that is specifically about how the exchange rate can impact our box account. So I might just give a short explanation here and you can check that video out for more detailed analysis. All right, let's get right into it. To keep things simple, we're gonna be looking at the impacts of a depreciation of the dollar. The first set of impacts we will look at is related to imports and exports. Firstly, a depreciation means that we lose purchasing power, and this makes imports appear more expensive to Australians. To Australian businesses, this means that the cost of imported inputs are more expensive and they could respond by passing on these costs in the form of higher prices. This leads to what's called imported inflation. Also, with the same amount of imports becoming more expensive, the box and current account balance worsens in the short term. In the long term though, export and import volumes will adjust to improve box again. This is because with a depreciation, our exports look more internationally competitive, while imports look less attractive. You can learn more about this from my video on the J-curve. These changes in exports and imports don't just have an impact on BOGS and CAD, but they're also components of aggregate demand. Therefore, a depreciation can have a corresponding impact on economic activity. So conversely, an appreciation of the Australian dollar will have opposite effects. The impacts of an appreciated dollar on international competitiveness was seen in the mid 2010s. At the back of a really strong dollar during the second mining boom, the car manufacturing industry struggled to stay competitive and eventually announced their closure. This is called Dutch disease, and I've got a video explaining that in more detail too. The second set of impacts is more focused on investments and surfacing costs. Again, I've covered some of these impacts on my videos about influences on the NPY account of the balance of payments. In my other videos, I've explained that a depreciation means that we have decreased purchasing power. This causes the relative cost of servicing liabilities to increase. For example, Imagine if I owe a loan to Hong Kong and it requires me to pay 100 Hong Kong dollars every month. If the dollar depreciates, the 100 Hong Kong dollars interest would appear more to me. This change in relative value of debt servicing costs and the debt itself is called the valuation effect. Therefore, a depreciation can cause a greater CAFE surplus and an NPY deficit. Furthermore, a depreciated dollar means that Australian investments are more affordable to foreign investors. This can incentivize an increase in foreign investments, adding to our levels of liabilities, adding to more returns on investments and servicing costs outflows, worsening our NPY. However, this might not happen if the Aussie dollar is expected to depreciate even more. From a foreign investor's perspective, their assets in Australia will lose value if the Australian dollar continues to depreciate. So they would rather delay their investment or withdraw existing investments before it depreciates further. I know that this is a lot to grasp. A lot of these concepts are just theoretical and can even seem like they contradict each other. But I hope my visual aids and explanations have made it easier for you to understand. In my next video, we'll be looking at government intervention on the exchange rate. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.